Good morning, fungi allies. Hope you're doing great. Um, today I want to talk some about commercial mushroom farming. Um, every day or two days I usually get an email with someone wanting to start out a mushroom farm and wondering how to do it. Um, and I think there's a couple of key factors to consider when you're thinking about starting a mushroom farm. Uh, a lot of times this comes from a passion and interest around mushrooms and around what they might be able to provide your community or the world at large. And I think it's really important from the beginning to identify what it is, that you're basically your mission, why it is that you are getting into this industry, getting into commercial cultivation of mushrooms. Um, this is going to guide a lot of your decisions and a lot of how you do it. Um, so I think clarifying at the very beginning what your mission is and what your goals are is critical to any commercial uh, mushroom farm. Uh, say your goal is to make $50,000 a year. It's going, you, how you do it is going to be a lot different than if your goal was to provide medicinal mushrooms to your community or work with three different herbalists to create uh, medicinal mushroom blends. Um, so, so how you do it is really going to depend on um, what your goals are and what your mission is. Uh, for example, our mission is to create a world of balance and connection by revealing the power of fungi. So whenever I'm looking at uh, a decision in my business and, and how to do things, I come back to that mission and say, is this going to create a world of connection and a world of balance? Is this uh, generating, is this action, is this decision in line with my mission? Um, and it's been really helpful to have that guiding post as the business has grown and as uh, there's been critical decisions to make of what products do we want to work on? Uh, do we want to focus on education or fresh mushroom production? All these kind of things that, that came up after five years of producing. Um, what opportunities to pursue? So I think that's the first critical thing when you're thinking about commercial mushroom cultivation is outlining a clear mission and some clear goals. The other thing, when a lot of people start out, they want to do the entire process in-house. And this is something that I, recommend, I, I don't recommend. Um, most of the industry, most commercial mushroom growers don't do the whole process in-house. Um, and there's two, thing, two like big advantages that I see from not doing it in-house. First, it gives a really easy method of expanding the, uh, your business. Um, so if you're not doing everything in-house and you want to grow, rather than getting more customers or producing more, you can just bring another stage of the process in-house. Um, so it creates, creates this easy method to expand the business without having to get more sales or produce more of a product. The other thing is it helps, um, it helps both grow a customer base and grow a skill set. So rather than trying to, to do everything all at once, you have support from professionals who have been in the industry for a while um, and you can learn from them and really focus on, on specific parts of the process, master those and then start to go into other parts. <coughs> Um, the way that I see the mushroom industry being divided is really into three sectors. There's uh, spawn production, there's fruiting block production, and then there's fruiting and sales of fresh mushrooms. So those three things are really three very different things and a lot of times are divided into completely different businesses. And as this industry, the kind of small scale commercial specialty mushroom production industry grows, those little niche businesses are starting to be more prevalent around the United States. So now you have uh, block producers that you can work with in Maine and in Massachusetts and in Illinois and in uh, Missouri and down in Louisiana and in California. So there's more and more of these kind of micro businesses popping up that provide these services to the specialty mushroom industry. Um, and similar with spawn providers. There's spawn providers all over the country, um, typically on a smaller scale, that provide really high quality spawn. So this takes a lot of pressure off of growers just starting out to do everything and have the infrastructure to do everything economically. Um, instead, really focusing on, say, just fruiting and selling the mushrooms. 
So if you're just starting out, you could work with a block producer to buy blocks in and really focus on getting customers that are going to consistently buy 300 pounds of mushrooms per week and developing a fruiting room and, uh, and the schedule of fruiting so you just really have this consistent fruiting of, you know, say shiitakes and oysters and consistent sales happening uh, before you even go into all the lab work and production needed to uh, make the blocks, right? And this creates a really easy um, a revenue jump. Right, so if you decide, okay, this is working really well and I want to start making blocks in-house, well then, if it's 300 pounds a week, then you're probably looking at something like uh, 60 or $80,000 that can easily be brought into the business. You know, just by increasing what's, what part of the process you're doing. Um, and then the same with Spawn, you know, later on down the line, you could bring that in-house um, or just completely keep that as a uh, someone else coming in. So th those are just a couple of tips that I have for people um, that are starting out with commercial farms. And the biggest things that I see when you're doing a commercial farm is uh, efficiency and consistency. Those are critical if you want to be successful. Um, if you have more questions or ever want some sort of... Um, uh, support in, in starting a farm or making your farm more efficient, feel free to reach out to me here or uh, through email at willie at fungiallied.com. Thanks a lot.